So we're going to start with a plane containing three points, and then I want to find a normal vector to the plane. So find a normal vector to the plane. Ah, so normal vector. I haven't explained that yet. I don't think. All right, so I'll explain what that is before we find it. So our three points, point A will be 1, negative 1, 0. Point B will be 2, 1, negative 1. And C, negative 1, 1, 2. You can absolutely use commas, especially if any of your numbers had two digits in them. So for example, if, uh, if my point A was 1, negative 11, 0, maybe that 1 is negative 11, or maybe the 1 is part of the 10, in which case you better use commas. But if it's just single um, integer values, you don't necessarily have to use commas all the time. All right, so let's <coughs> look at the word normal vector. Oops. Normal vector. So normal to a plane, so I'm going to draw a plane out here. Normal is going to point perpendicular to a plane. So think about your table. Your table is a plane. The earth is flat. It's a plane. So normal will point straight up or straight down to either of those two objects. Uh, if you think about your piece of paper, if you point your pen directly out of your piece of paper, move your paper and your pen at the same time so that it is pointing perpendicular or straight out of your paper as you move your paper. Obviously, as you rotate your paper, your pen's going to rotate also. So that's another way to think about normal. So it's always going to point directly out. What we're going to use in the next section is when we define what a plane, uh, the equation of a plane, if you take any two vectors that live inside your plane, you can compute the normal. The normal will be perpendicular to any two vectors inside your plane. So those two vectors perpendicular to any two vectors in your plane is your normal. It's, it's very similar to slope of the plane, yes. But not in the, it's sort of the, I don't want to say the angle the plane is, but it, it, it points directly out of the plane. Uh, what would be the problem if I took two parallel vectors? How many normals would we get? We get infinite normals. So you have to take two vectors that are not parallel inside your plane. And again, use the right hand rule. Just think about your two fingers are inside the plane and your thumb will point out of the plane. All right, so I want a normal to a plane containing three points, A, B, and C. So I'm going to graph A, B, and C on the board, A, B, C. How do I know they're here? Doesn't matter. How can I get two vectors that are not, so if, the, if there's a plane containing these three points, it's kind of silly to draw a plane, you don't need to do it. I'm going to erase it in a second, but just pretend that the plane is your paper. How do I find two vectors that are not parallel going through some points? So we got some choices. I could go A to B, and I'll use blue so it matches that drawing I had up there. A to B and A to C. That'll work. I could choose basically, I think of A as like the initial or the starting point, and I can go to B and C like I did here. You could go from C to A, C to B. That works too. Or start at B, B to A, B to C. Doesn't matter. I just happen to go A to C, A to B like this. So we'll give these vectors names, u and v. How do I get the vector u? So do n minus start. That's how you get the vector between two points. Vector from p to q. You'd write it like something like that. p to q equals n minus start. 
which will be q is the end, start is the p. So that's the vector pq right there, q minus p. So using that, n minus start, u is going to be b minus a, <coughs> and v is going to be c minus a. All right, so compute u and v. How do I get a vector perpendicular to both u and v? Take two vectors, how do I get a vector perpendicular? Name of the section, cross product. So take two vectors, cross them, you'll get a normal vector. So compute u and v, and then u cross v. So I'll give you three minutes to do the subtraction and cross products. I'll answer your questions for the first minute, and then I'll come up here and compute it. So if you're stuck, it's a good time for any questions you have. So any questions on
calculations I made on the board. So we're going to look at the indefinite article A. Find A normal vector. So think of your table. How many vectors point out of your table? Is there exactly one? What if I double the vector you're thinking of? Still pointing out of the table. I could triple it or multiply by any positive scalar or multiply by any negative scalar. It still points out of the table. In, so in this question, I didn't specify, so I don't care. I would just leave it as 606. Uh, you could change it to 101. That would work, or negative 1, 0, negative 1. Uh, you could normalize it by dividing by the magnitude, which would be whatever that number is, square 6, square 6, add it together, take a square root. You could divide it by that, and that would be the unit normal. Sometimes the unit normal is way more useful depending on what you're computing. It all just depends. But just be aware, there are infinite normals, but they all are scalar multiples, non-zero multiples of each other. How would I find the triangle area right here? So I'm going to do another question. Find the triangle area from the triangle ABC. Of the triangle ABC. Same ABC as above. So I'll draw the triangle out. A. B, C. So what do I need? Two vectors on the sides. Well, lucky, we just computed two vectors, one on each of the sides from A. So we already got U, we already got V. How do we get the area of this triangle with sides U and V? So it'll be areas one half so we're going to use a product, but in this case, we want the cross product of u and v. Take the magnitude, and then that would give us the parallelogram area. The triangle area is half of that magnitude of the cross product. This case, in, in this case here, I really want to just use the normal I computed, not the scaled down normal. If I scale it down, I would get a smaller area than I want. So in this case, it's better to use, or we really need to use that normal we just computed above. So I'm just bringing that right there, that normal we computed, 606. I don't want to square sixes and add them together. So what I did is factored out the six and then that's a scalar, so I could bring the scalar outside the magnitude as the absolute value. So the property I used was magnitude alpha v is, ma is absolute value alpha times magnitude of v. So I brought the scalar outside. Six, absolute value is six, so divided by two is three, and now we do have to compute the magnitude, but that should be super easy. So it's three square root two. That's our area. So there is torque, of course. I'm going to skip it because the computations, you just need to know the formulas, and then you can compute right off of that. So I'm going to skip torque. It's in your textbook, but I'm pretty sure in your physics and or statics and dynamics class, you're going to compute torque quite a bit there. So it's really no more than just knowing the formulas for it. But this is everything you need for torque we've done right now, so far in this class. <clears throat> so we're going to take that parallelogram up a dimension. So parallelogram is a two-dimensional object. So what we're going to do is create a 
parallel object from three vectors. No, not a parallel object, a parallelogram analog using three vectors. So here, I'm gonna draw this object on the board on a two-dimensional object. So what we're gonna do first is take three fingers, make sure no two are parallel, so you can kinda just spread them out, almost like you're flicking somebody off, but don't put your index ring finger all the way down. Make sure they're not parallel, so kinda like a tripod of a camera or something like that. You could change the order around a little bit. Uh, but what we're gonna try to draw is the object who has three sides, will be three vectors that none of which are parallel, all coming from the same point. And it's going to be horrible on a two-dimensional screen, but we're gonna do our best to draw this shape out. So this shape is called a parallel pipe head. It's one word, apparently. Parallel pipe head. So what I'm gonna do is start out with a base of a parallelogram. And I'll take U and V to be the vectors in the base. Now I need a third vector that is not in this plane. So the third vector is gonna e either need to go some amount kind of up or down. So I'm just gonna pick, and when you draw this third vector, make sure that, well, just try to draw it like this right here. That'll be a vector W. This one, think about U and V in the table, and then W is sticking some amount out of the table. It doesn't have to go straight up at all. It can come out at an angle, but it can't live inside the same plane. Now make a copy of W. I'll use the green for the copies of W. And I'll make W green as well. So draw a copy of W coming out of every single original vector right there. So it's sort of like you're building a really bad, or maybe the wind's blowing and you're trying to set up one of those, what do you call that, at the farmer's market, that little tent with the four posts, the canopy, but the wind's blowing really hard. So that's basically what we're trying to draw. And then the roof is gonna be a copy of the parallelogram. If you drew it nicely, it should go right from point to point on these arrows right there. So you gotta copy the parallelogram on the bottom and the top. So we're gonna be looking for volume now. Volume of a parallel pipe head. So first thing, we're gonna have to compute the cross product, which if I took the magnitude would give me the area of the base. So we do the cross to get the base, and then we're gonna dot with the W vector. This is, are we looking at a, so if we look at the cross product, we have a vector. What do we get if we take a vector dot a vector? We'll get a number or a scalar. So when I put absolute value around, or vertical bars, I mean absolute value. So that'll be a number, and we're gonna get the absolute value of that. That is the volume of this parallel pipe head. And that's with sides U, V, and W. What do you think we would get if you, if any of these two vectors are parallel? So think about we're setting up this canopy right here and W is parallel, or W lives inside of the UV plane. Maybe W is like that right there. What would our volume be? Zero. Our volume be zero. That means your setup is completely flat. So if any of these vectors are multiples of the other two, or linear combination of the other two, then your volume would be zero. So without going too deep of an explanation, uh, that would mean basically your tent has collapsed or your base has an area of zero, things like that. So if you get zero right here, if you're computing and you get zero, most likely I did not give you 
uh, I did not give you a problem that should have volume zero. Let's go back to the parallelogram where things are a little easier to think about. And let's think about what type of mistake we could have made to get the area zero of a parallelogram. All right, we computed the area of parallelog parallelogram up here. I talked about if we got two sides that were parallel, we would get a zero area. Let's say I gave you four points. If I gave you four points that form parallelogram, how could you make a mistake if I go A, B, C, D? Can you think of two vectors you could form that would be parallel? So the A, B, C, D, that would be one vector. A, B, C, D, those would be parallel. That would be a bad choice. And then the A, C, B, D would be another bad choice. So if you do a computation of area or volume and you got zero starting with points, you probably didn't pick, you have to pick a single point to root everything from or to start from. So if you're given points, pick one point and then make sure all your vectors come out of that point right there. And the indication or the spidey sense that you should notice is your volume is zero. If you get your volume zero, most likely you made this mistake. You have some type of parallel vectors going on.